Hi everyone and welcome back to Unit 3 in Week 1 of our course from Media Computation to Data Science. In this unit we want to focus on another kind of medium that we have, it's text. Text has been around for quite a while. It was basically the first time when we could store or preserve things for a longer time and also distribute them throughout the country or throughout a city. This, for example, is one of the oldest still preserved um, papyri that we have. It's, it was made in the third century and it's called the Heracles Papyrus because it contains a poem about Heracles. As you can see, it has written text on the papyrus here. One issue back then was we didn't have good material to keep things forever. So as you can see, the papyrus degrades over time. Also, another problem was to copy those texts multiple times. You needed writers who would copy every letter to another papyrus. This is something where a lot of errors can occur and also it's pretty time consuming. That's why the invention of the printing press was one of the biggest success stories for at least um, text-based information. It's probably one of the biggest success stories um, of all times. So um, it was invented in the 15th century in Europe. Uh, also it was invented in different forms in other places of the world. Um, it worked as follows. You had letters which are called types made from wood or metal that you could put on um, a printing press and then you would put ink or add ink on that and you could press those letters or those types on paper or other media that you wanted to use. Here you can see the types. Um, as you can see those are small metal rods and each of, each of these rods contains one letter. So for example here we have a Y or a Z or an A or an L. So this is the lazy fox uh, jumps over the um, sentence which contains every letter. Using that technology as well, we want to focus today on the building blocks of text. For that I open a new project and I go to the operators category where I can find blocks here that I can apply on text. In this case I want to use the split block which will help me to get to the building blocks of text. I write a text in here. My text is going to be, let me tell you a story about Alonso. He once said. Now we can use that block to split our text. If I click on the block now, I get a list with every word because at the back here the default setting is split by space. So at every space in my text, it will create a new element of the list and will add that element to this list. So my text contains 12 words. Let me tell you a story about Alonso, he once said. And then I made a space at the end, so I got another empty field. We can also explore other options that we have here. So now we saw that words are one way to look at text but we can also split the text, for example, by letter. If I do that, I get a way longer list because now it's split by every letter. So I have the L and the E and the T from let. Then I also have the space because space is also um, a character or a letter. Um, so now you can see that my list is 51 elements long. So my whole text contains 51 elements. I now use the term list. As you might remember from the last course or because you learned stuff about lists, lists are one data type where I, where I can store values. So I can have multiple elements in my list and every element can contain a value. This value can for example be a letter as we have in this case, but it can also be a number, it could be an object, it could be another list or even a block. Now we want to create a project with those letters that we got here. The project is going to be an infinite run on sentence. So we want to write down those letters in different directions all over our screen forever. To do so, we need to apply a loop or we need to use a loop on that list. We have different loops in Snap, so let me first show it to you with the for loop. You can find the for loop in the control category. 
Um, just as a short recap, it works like that. You have an internal variable here, which is called i. And i is set to the first element, which is the start um, value of i at the first time. And then it's automatically increased by 10, uh, by 1 each time until it reaches the last value. Then the loop stops. I will just demonstrate that with the say block. So if I say i for one second, you now see my sprite counting up. Now i is 4, then it's 5, then it's 6, 7, 8, um, until it reaches the last value, which is 10, then the loop stops. We can now use that to access elements of our list. We first want to program what we want to do and then we can include the list to that. So what each letter should do is it should be written down on the stage. Therefore, we can use the pen, uh, a block from the pen category, which is called write. The write block lets me write stuff on the stage. So if I just click on it like it's a default, it will write hello at the position that my sprite currently is. I can change the size that I want to write in. So for example, if I, if I write hello in 30 now, it's much bigger. Also, I can change the text that I'm writing. So for example, I can now write Alonso to write another word. So in this case, we want to write one letter. Also, let's do that back to 12. After each letter, because we want the letter to be dispersed across the stage, we want to change the direction we're looking in so we kind of get a letter snake. To change the direction, we can use the turn block. Um, and then we can turn sometimes left and sometimes right. We can do that by using the pick random block as an input to the turn block. And sometimes it will pick a negative value and sometimes it will pick a positive value. So back to the letters. Right now, uh, I don't have an input for that. Also, I don't know how often I want to repeat things. So for that, I need to find out how long the list is. To access the length of a list, for example, we have a lot of lists blocks in the variables category. You can see that the list blocks, which are the red ones here, are in the color of lists. So all the red blocks have to do with lists. Here's one that gives me the length of my list. So if I use my text or my the list that I created from splitting my text as an input to the length block, I get a number which is all the elements that my text had, my list had. I can use that as the end value for the for loop because I want to repeat until I reached the end of my text list. So now I want to access each of the elements of that list. Let me copy that again. So the first element of our list would be an L. The second would be an E and so on and so forth. I can access each element of a list by using the item of block. Item one of my list in this case would be the L. Item two would be the E. Item three would be the T. Item, I can also use last. The last item would be a space. I can also let me uh, let, let it generate random um, items of my list. So now it just picks a random letter of my letter list. So that's pretty cool. I can access elements of a list by inputting numbers in here. The great thing is I already is, uh, has already, uh, always a number stored in it. So we can just use that I value to reference um, as a reference to a input or as an input to that block and as a reference to the respective element in the list. So if I put i in here and tell the text to write down item i at for the first iteration it's l because i is 1. For the second iteration it's e because i is then 2 and this will happen until I reach the end of my text. Let's try that. Let's clear the stage first. Okay, so we forgot one thing. As you can see, our sprite now left the stage. We have to prevent that by adding the if on edge bounce block at the end of our script. Let's try it again. So now I have my text written in here. 
We want to do that all the time, so because it's going to be an infinite sentence, so let's wrap a forever around that. Let me show you that in full screen. So you can now see that we have our sentences written all our sentence written all over the stage. And it's an infinite sentence that still makes sense after the 500th iteration. So we can write that down forever. When you now think that's it, guess again. We have another way to accessing items of a list. And it's actually a pretty cool way. So in the variables category, you can find another block, which is called for each. As you can see, it's a red list block. So I can use that to directly enumerate every item of a list. So I can just copy all the things here. Let me remove that. And I need a list as an input here. I already have a list. It's my split, my text block. And now I don't just have a number as this internal variable, but the whole item. So I already have the letter and now I can tell the script to always write the item. So at the first iteration, now it's L and the second iteration, it's, all, uh, it's automatically taking the second letter. So let me clear that again and let's try the same thing with that way shorter and way easier to read script. Awesome. It worked one time and now let's wrap the forever loop around there as well. And we get the exact same result, but it's way easier to understand because we can use the specifically for made for lists for each block. Now it's your turn to experiment and come up with your own run on sentence. Find another story that you want to tell forever. Also feel free to experiment with the colors and I'll see you in the next video.